So you're probably wondering, just what happened to me? How did my life go in this direction? And to be completely honest with you, I'm asking myself the same thing right now. Let's just start from the beginning. The year was 2001, or 2002, somewhere in there. I had just rented Pokemon 2000 on VHS from my local video store. I can vividly remember the walk back home, and how excited I was to watch it. Despite this, I barely remember the movie itself. The one thing I do remember was one of the trailers shown before the film. MVP Most Valuable Primate. It's a funny chimpanzee playing hockey that is literally the coolest combination of things. I never got to watch it as a kid, but this trailer had always stuck with me. Jump forward to over a decade later. It's 2018, and this trailer I kinda remember is the funniest thing in the world now. I start posting pictures of the movie everywhere, and I keep linking the trailer to my friends. In April of 2019, I made a video where I did a bunch of video requests at once, and one of them was to analyze the MVP Most Valuable Primate trailer. And in the video, I say this. Um, but I never saw the movie, as I never found a copy anywhere, but I'm gonna find a copy and I'm gonna review that entire movie from start to finish. Within a week of saying that, this movie I've never found anywhere in my life appeared in my local video store. It was like fate. So after all those years, I finally got to watch the movie, and I decided to do a little video talking about it. In July of that year, at the same store where I found the first film, I found a copy of the second, Most Vertical Primate. I didn't get around to watching it for a long time, but in July of 2020, I finally watched it and made a follow-up video. March of 2021, I find the third and final installment, MXP Most Extreme Primate, at the same store, this time on VHS. They also had MVP2 on VHS, and I couldn't resist. You haven't experienced true pain until you walk up to the counter and hand the cashier your two VHS monkey movies and nothing else. No, they're not for my kids. I just like monkey movies. Is that so hard to understand? And like a month later, same store, I found a DVD copy of MXP, and shortly after, I purchased the first one on VHS to complete the collection. I'm not allowed in the store anymore, they had to cut me off after buying too many monkey movies. So I've talked in the past about the first two movies, and I never talked about the third film. My old video on the first one is... Uh, um... Um, and, um... Not very good, and my opinions of the first two films have changed quite a bit over the years. So we are going to do a Most Valuable Marathon. We are going to talk about all three of these films back to back in a single video. My definitive retrospective of this beloved cinematic trilogy. Spoiler warning for all three films, if for some reason you care. Back in my 2019 video, I made fun of MVP Most Valuable Primate a lot. It's a pretty nonsensical kids movie. But over time, I've ironically praised this movie so much that I don't know it's real anymore. I don't know if I think this is a great movie, or if I've literally gaslit myself into growing a greater appreciation for it, or it could just be the nostalgia talking, but... Yes, this is one of my favorite movies of all time, and yes, this is the hill I'm really prepared to die on. So Jack is this awesome chimpanzee who works with this professor at a university and does lots of funny things. Look, he's doing people things. It's funny. I wish my room was this cool. Are you kidding me? The university's janitor takes care of Jack, and this is one of the best characters in the franchise. Most of the actors are playing things pretty straight, but this man is a cartoon character. I love it. So the professor is planning to send Jack back to the funny monkey reserve where he came from, uh, but then he dies. Yeah, less than 10 minutes into this franchise made for small children, and we have our first on-screen death. Jack and the janitor overhear the school's dean, who is actually just evil by the way, saying that he's sold Jack to another evil university where he's going to be experimented on. The dean is comically evil, and any scene with him and the janitor together is absolutely flawless. Where's the monkey? Jack? Oh, uh, he's gone? Who stole that chimp? I don't know. I'll find that chimp if it's the last thing I do! In between all of this happening, we meet Steve and Tara. Sort of. It's really weird how they're introduced. It's a scene of Jack, and then we just see these two. And then it cuts right back to Jack without anything happening in the scene. They just appear, we don't learn anything about them, 
I love this movie so much. We get another incredible scene with Tara soon after. Oh, also Tara's deaf, by the way, which you don't learn until a few scenes later. She's sad because she's not invited to this party or something, but this kid is just throwing invitations in the air. Just, just like, go grab one. That feels like your fault. Oh, but then you see that one of them does have Tara's name on it, and it falls to the floor behind the desk. So no, I take it back. This isn't Tara's fault. This kid's just dumb. Oh, and this conflict never comes back, by the way. The envelope's never found, none of this is ever really resolved. It just happens, and then the movie carries on and forgets about it. This movie's genius. There's a long scene after this where she's really sad that she has no friends, and it makes it so much funnier that there's just never any payoff for any of this. Meanwhile, Steve joins the school hockey team, a team that is very bad at hockey and very good at being mean to Steve. Oh, poor Steve. Okay, let's go back to the funny monkey stuff. Jack and the janitor get ready to send Jack back to the funny monkey reserve before the dean sends him to the evil university. So he puts Jack in the bag, gives him his ticket, and tells him where to get off. And then he leaves. If you have seen any kind of funny animal playing sports movie, and believe me, I've seen my fair few, then you already know what's happening next. Jack misses his stop, surprise surprise, and ends up in Canada. Oh no! This is such a funny shot. The next day, Steve is practicing hockey when the most valuable primate himself arrives. <laughs> What's the matter? What happened? Did you see a monkey in the woods? Okay, Steve, Steve, that is not the woods. That is a single bush. Tara, this is Canada, right? There's no monkeys in the woods. Am I the crazy one here? What is happening? One thing I really love is that the connection between Jack and these two kind of makes sense. Jack uses sign language to communicate with humans, and Tara being deaf gives Jack a reason for him to follow her and Steve. They're the only ones who can really communicate with him. Unlike a lot of these kinds of movies, it doesn't feel forced at all. This is the first thing in the movie that actually makes complete sense. And then we get the long obligatory monkey does funny things sequence, followed by the obligatory monkey learns hockey sequence and you know i think every movie should have a monkey learns hockey sequence during one of steve's hockey games jack decides to come along and we are treated to one of the greatest scenes in all of film history wow you guys fast Jack helps them win the game, and it's decided that awesome chimps should be allowed to play hockey, because it would make a lot of money, which, yeah, fair. I would be going to a lot more hockey games. And now that they have Jack on the team, the rest of the team is motivated to get better, which, once again, yeah, fair. They don't want to embarrass themselves in front of the most valuable primate. But the team's goalie just isn't getting any better. And then Steve finds out that he can't see. So he buys glasses, and now he's a good goalie. His character arc is that he buys glasses. This movie is an emotional roller coaster. And now these guys are awesome at hockey, and they win enough games to go to the Harvest Cup. But oh no, the Dean sees Jack on TV, and he's gonna go get Jack. Oh no! So they're playing hockey and stuff, and then at halftime, the Dean comes to take away Jack. This area, by the way, is only for hockey players, which you are not. So, uh... Unless you're gonna put on some skates, you'll have to excuse me. Have a nice day. Toodles. I want back Jack! The Dean plans to go get him as soon as the game ends, and the team says their heartfelt goodbyes to Jack Primate. Jack, I, I know they're taking you away at the end of the game. I, I was knitting this hat for you. You know, it's not quite done yet, but I wanted you to have it. I'm sure gonna miss you, Jack. Anyway, it's hockey time, and whoa, Jack did it, he scored the goal at the last second, but oh no, oh no, the Dean got him, but ha ha, you've been fooled, it was Tara all along, you idiot! I'm, I'm sorry about that, I, I was getting into the monkey movie a little bit too much. Anyway, Steve snuck Jack out and brought him to the airport to send him home. 
and Jack makes it back to the Funny Monkey Reserve. Oh, and look at that. It's the janitor guy from the beginning. That's awesome. That's the end of the movie. It's over. So that's MVP, Most Valuable Primate. This movie's really dumb and doesn't really make any sense, and I love everything about it. This movie's fantastic. Yeah, all this movie really needed to be was chimpanzee plays hockey, haha <laughs> laugh, but I don't know, there's a surprising amount of heart and charm in there. This film gives me overwhelming nostalgia. Even though I had only seen it a few years ago, I grew up watching hockey and playing NHL 2003 on the PlayStation 2, but hockey aside, it takes me back to that time period. I remember that walk home perfectly, with Pokemon 2000 in my hands, looking at the back of the box while talking to my mom. I remember the apartment we lived in, all the cartoons I watched, the games I played. I remember my elementary school and the friends I had. This film unearthed so many memories. Life back then was simple and perfect. And so is MVP, Most Valuable Primate. Calm down, it's just a monkey movie. MVP Most Valuable Primate received mostly terrible reviews, but it managed to get a theatrical sequel, MVP 2 Most Vertical Primate. My expectations going into this were extremely low. Typically sequels like this will just take the funny animal and shove them into a new situation, kind of disregarding any previous entries in the series, but to my surprise, this movie actually makes an effort to be a proper sequel. So Jack is back at the Funny Monkey Reserve playing hockey with his brother Louie, who is another one of the best characters in the franchise, but we'll get back to that. Louie is not very good at hockey, and Jack just looks so disappointed in him. Sadly, the janitor guy from the first movie is not back, but Jack isn't at the Funny Monkey Reserve for long anyway because he's drafted onto a professional hockey team on live TV. Jack! Oh, come on! Jack! Jack meets his new hockey team, and unfortunately, none of them are really as memorable as the team from the first movie. And that goes for all the human characters in the second and third movies. None of the humans reach the lofty heights of the original cast. One of the players on Jack's new team doesn't like Jack. He does not want to play hockey with the most valuable primate. If he's on the ice tonight, I won't be. You got it? We get a montage of Jack winning every game, and they really want us to dislike this guy for being upset, but I don't know. If a chip and Z joined my team and basically carried us, I'd probably be moderately upset too. It's not that unreasonable. Hey, well, Rob, did you ever think you'd get uh, chumped by a chimp? This guy drinks away his sorrows at the local ice cream bar, because it's a kid movie and you can't have alcohol. Another chocolate? Sure. Make it a double. I assumed they were setting him up as the villain of this movie. He was going to send Jack away somewhere out of jealousy and get the top spot on the team again. But he looks at a picture of Jack's family, and he shows Jack a picture of his family, and now the two have reached an understanding and are friends, because they both have families. Batman v Superman is directly inspired by MVP2 Most Vertical Primate, and suddenly things make a whole lot more sense. We get a big montage of the two finally working together. And it's kind of weird how much time they spend on this character early on, because after the 30 minute mark, he's basically gone from the movie. Alright, that's enough. No being mean for the next 20 seconds while I talk about something I actually really like about this movie. It doesn't just lazily throw Jack into a new situation and call it a day. The first 30 minutes or so are a pretty natural continuation of the first movie's story. Also, Jack gets to do this. Jack! The other team has had enough though. They fake an injury to make it look like Jack bit him. This scene is heartbreaking. I don't like seeing the valuable primate sad, please make it stop. The crowd boos at Jack, the press is questioning the team, and Jack runs away to look for a far less interesting story. Yeah, this is where the movie starts to lose me. I was really into the hockey storyline, but then it abandons it just as it's getting good to do the animal sports sequel thing. So Jack encounters this kid on a skateboard. This movie has skateboarding in it! This skateboard kid is putting up missing flyers of Jack. This lady is looking for the kid who ran away from his foster family. And there's a guy named Ollie, haha <laughs> like the skateboard trick. He runs a skateboard shop where the kid learns about an upcoming skateboarding competition. From that information alone, I guarantee you can guess the rest of the story. 
Jack follows the kid around, watches him skateboard, and they become friends. Remember when I said I liked that him following Steve and Tara made sense? This is the opposite. He follows this kid for no reason. While that's happening, we get a fantastic subplot where Louie hitchhikes to Seattle to find Jack with that one guy who was in the audience of every game in the first movie. <laughs> Turns out, Jack is awesome at skateboarding, and we get some awesome scenes of him on a skateboard. Here in my notes, underneath that sentence, it just says, scene of that. I don't know, I just thought that was funny. Anyway, cut to a scene of that. But the lady looking for the kid finds his secret skate park hideout, so Ollie lets him and Jack spend the night in his house. More importantly, Louie arrives in Seattle, and the team thinks he's Jack. And as we established in the beginning of the movie, Louie is very bad at hockey. It's genius foreshadowing. I think he had a bad banana! <laughs> Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Jack! Jack! You sure you're alright? <laughs> Ollie takes the kid to the skateboarding competition where Jack has this incredible disguise. Yes, that is Jack if you can't tell. And obviously they win the competition. Ollie adopts skateboard kid whose name I never actually learned. Jack replaces Louie on the hockey team and wins the game. And they go back home to the funny monkey reserve in the end. This movie starts out really strong, but the skateboarding storyline really holds this movie back. The story was going in a really interesting direction, and I liked Jack's dynamic with the guy who didn't like him initially. If the story was about the two of them trying to prove Jack's innocence and get him back onto the team, this movie would have been so good. But it abandons all of that so we can have funny skateboarding. Don't get me wrong, Jack on a skateboard is very cool, and the story wasn't terrible, it just felt a lot more generic. The Louis B plot though was fantastic. Good job Louis, never change. MXP Most Extreme Primate is the final film, and this one didn't get a theatrical release. It went straight to DVD and video. I had never seen this one before. It was exciting, after all this time finally getting to see the finale to this trilogy. Jack is at home reminiscing his days as a professional hockey player, after the announcement that most valuable primates have been banned from the NHL. To cheer him up, his family surprises him with a trip to Mexico. <laughs> This is cinema. This lady and the four chimpanzees arrive at the airport to board their plane, and is this legal? I mean, they were only just recently banned from hockey. I guess planes are still okay, they just haven't gotten around to those yet. There's a big group of kids getting on the flight, and this kid in a sombrero goes to the bathroom, and Jack just follows him for no reason, but then leaves, and then accidentally gets on a plane to Colorado instead. And in typical MVP fashion, the kid who went to the bathroom was left behind, his group is already gone, and this never comes back. This kid is gone for the rest of the movie. I can't even think of a joke, they really just abandoned him here. I gotta give this lady credit, she realizes Jack's missing much quicker than the Home Alone mom. Also an MVP tradition, this is the part of the movie where we have to be introduced to these two kids who Jack will have to follow in order for the story to progress. You better move on, Pops, so you miss your plan, and then Petey and I will have to cancel the epic fiesta we got planned. I thought this guy was doing a joke voice for this scene, but he talks like this for the whole movie. I don't know if I love or despise this character. Anyway, this kid is sad because they just moved here from out of state and he has no friends. Jack gets on a truck delivering Mexican food, and he gets on it thinking it goes to Mexico, I guess? What happened to Jack? He was pretty smart in the first movie, but here he's just wandering around for no reason. Meanwhile, his family's trying to get back to him, but suddenly there's a hurricane coming and the airport's closed? Oh, and now there's these two guys who owe money to a crime lord and plan to capture and sell Jack, because he's a celebrity at this point, in order to pay off their boss. This movie is insane. Pete joins the snowboarding club, and we get some totally radical snowboarding scenes. This movie ha- oh, oh, is this not a surfing movie? Pete almost dies going off the doom drop, and if you have a cliff that you have to call the doom drop, you should probably tell the new guy. This kid is absolutely miserable at all times, by the way. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, maybe. No, I better head home. Yeah, okay. See ya. Jack follows them home for no reason, they're just friends now. We also find out that Pete's brother is in a rock band when they just moved here from out of state. Did the band form in two days or did the band move here with him? 
It sounds like I hate this movie, but I don't. I just think it's really, really bad. That doesn't mean I'm not loving every single second of it. Obligatory Jack being funny scene. Obligatory Louie and the others being funny scene. Obligatory Louie almost dies in a hurricane scene. Okay, back to snowboarding. We find out about this snowboard competition, but everyone needs a partner and Pete doesn't have one. I wonder what most valuable partner he will find. After an awesome training montage, Jack gears up to snowboard, where he's amazing at it, obviously. We get some more radical snowboarding with him and Pete together, and then we cut back to those two guys who are after Jack. Hello, thank you for calling Little India Curry Up. How may I direct your call? Bing bong, bing bong. Shut up! Oh no. They try to catch Jack on the hill, it doesn't work. Jack's family is trying to get back to him again. Pete and his brother are trying to get Jack on the news so they can find his family. But oh no, the two baddies are back with another racist accent, pretend to be Jack's family, and take him away. These two are the worst characters in the franchise, and at this point in the movie, I'm exhausted. Because I know this is going to lead to them having to get Jack back from these guys, and I don't care. I just want to go back to snowboarding. But. As it turns out, the crime boss is actually just a huge fan of Jack and has bet money on him winning the competition. He scolds the two goons and kicks them out of the rest of the movie. I'm happy again. I can enjoy the movie now. I gotta say, the crime lord canonically being a fan of the MVP Most Valuable Primate franchise saves this movie. From there, you know what happens. Pete and Jack enter the competition. They need to go off the doom drop. They win the race. Jack's family comes back for him, and the trilogy ends with Pete's brother's band playing a generic rock song. I've been talking about these movies for three years now, and it's nice to finally finish the trilogy. It's been a great experience re-watching all of these and getting to talk about them. I'm glad I got to see the movie so many years after that trailer on my Pokemon VHS tape. A part of me is sitting here thinking, now what? I did it. It's done. I watched these three movies after all these years. What do I do with my life now? I could watch Spy Mate, made by the same people. It's basically MVP, but Jack's a secret agent. Looks pretty cool. I'll definitely watch Spy Mate someday, but after so many monkey movies in a row, I think I need a break. Instead, I'm going to watch all of the other movies that had trailers on Pokemon VHS tapes. MVP wasn't the only one that stayed trapped within my brain for years. So, I will see you next time for Mary-Kate and Ashley's Switching Goals.